inaugural statement on February 13, 2013. On this day, a hundred years ago, His Holiness the Dhuti Dalai Lama declared the restoration of Tibet's status as a free and an independent state. Two years earlier, the Manchu army had unleashed a reign of terror in Lhasa, forcing His Holiness to escape to neighboring India. From exile, the Dhuti Dalai Lama dispatched his officials to Lhasa to take charge of the resistance. After a year of hard and brutal fighting, the Manchu army surrendered and Tibet reasserted its historical status as an independent state, a status it had enjoyed for more than a thousand years. Today, on this day, on February 13, 2013, we also commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Declaration of Tibetan Independence as an auspicious and joyous occasion, reminding us of a time in our history when we lived in our own land as free people, spoke our own language, and peacefully worshipped in our temples, and enjoyed our ancient way of life under the sovereign rule of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the Gandhi Bodan government. We engaged with other nations such as Bhutan, Nepal, Britain, Mongolia, China, India, and even the United States as equals and enter into treaties and trade agreements with a number of them. Today, today we also commemorate the occasion with sadness. Though Tibet remained a free nation for nearly 40 years after the Dhirtin Dalai Lama's declaration, our independence came to an end on October 1950, when Communist China launched a major military invasion defeating the Tibetan army at Changdong. Since then, China has systematically destroyed Tibet's ancient way of life. Over a million Tibetans have been killed or died of starvation, and many more imprisoned or deported to slave labor camps. Nearly all buildings and monuments of historical, cultural, and religious importance were demolished, and their treasures and the art objects looted and shipped to China for the precious metal, or for sale in the Asian art market. The mineral wealth, forest, water, and other natural resources of these lands have not only been systematically exploited to benefit China, but have been thoughtlessly wasted and devastated. Right now, China's population transfer policy has flooded China, uh, Tibet with Chinese colonialists, threatening to marginalize the indigenous population and make them a minority in their own homeland. Native craftsmen, small businessmen, workers, and even laborers have, have been near completely displaced by Chinese colonialists, causing tremendous social problems the economic and the psychological distress among the native population. The nomads of Tibet are being forced to leave their traditional grasslands and relocate uh, to so-called settlements with their concentration camp like rows of cinder block huts surrounded by high walls. What is unmistakably is that Tibetans as a distinct people and identity are being relentlessly pushed to a kind of functional extinction. Today, today is also a day of hope and courage, of iron will and truth tested in fire. Although the informers, the torturers, the executioners, the various organs of state security and the brutal People's Liberation Army are relentlessly going about to sp spreading terror throughout the land, the Tibetan people continue to resist, continue to call for an independent Tibetan nation and the return of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, to a free Tibet. These have been the principal rallying demands of the 108 brave men and women who have set themselves on fire to illuminate the truth of Tibet's cause to the world. Therefore today, on this momentous day, 
We resolve to dedicate ourselves to the commitment made by our martyrs to ensure that the Declaration of Independence made by the Dalai Lama 100 years ago this day transcends its historical function and becomes a living document, a blueprint for the coming revolutionary struggle for Tibetan freedom and the vision and the legacy of democracy instilled by His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama be preserved and flourished and that His Holiness himself be reunited with his people inside the free Tibet. To this end, those of us gathered here and across the world in the great tradition of freedom movement of the United States of America, India, South Africa, come together to form the Tibetan National Congress as a national freedom movement dedicated to re-establishing the sovereign, independent state of Tibet, in which a democratic system of government will be established based on free elections, the rule of law, and the privacy of individual freedom. We call upon all freedom-loving nations and people of the world to stand with us in support of the Tibetan people's historical rights to an independent homeland their rights to dissolve the bonds of oppression and their rights to determine their own political destiny as a separate and equal nation. We stand shoulder to shoulder in unwavering solidarity with our brave Tibetan brothers and sisters in occupied Tibet, resolute and assured in the knowledge that the day is fast approaching when we will all be reunited in a free, independent, and democratic